being reliable being reliable is one of the best qualities you could ever have hell yeah you know what i mean like just reliability and stability you know fucking okay. it's rare you know what i mean so yeah be a man of your word you know like on everything and and, and that shit will always pay off you know pretty much visuals visuals are gonna let you catch that vibe so much quicker than just the soundcloud link like just because of the time we're in i was man some crazy shit i was i got rjd2 on my fucking phone and i'm bumping him in the trailer like fucking that we're camping in right now and in my head i'm like man this shit was so had my attention so strongly back when it came out you know like shit what is this 99 or 2001 or something and now listening to it in 2017 i'm like it just doesn't have the same like grab because because of our attention span just because of what society and everything has done to us it's like you really need to be hit from all senses and all angles and shit so right. those visuals are fucking clutch they're everything like and you gotta have you gotta show all your personality in the visuals or else it's just like you're looking lame and shit you know what i mean if you're not really showing who you are you have, you have to be an exaggerated version of yourself in your visuals you know what i mean you have to be yourself turned up to fucking 15 so people really see the most wild out version of who you are because just everyone is like chilled out you know we're all the same fucking shit but what makes motherfuckers stand out is when they step outside the comfort zone and really go beyond that and stand for what they are to the umpteenth degree if that makes any fucking sense you got to know what you agree to and you got to remember what you agree to i always keep a calendar I always keep a calendar and fucking write down with my fucking real hand and a pen what I'm doing that day. And I make sure not to overbook myself because it's easy to like have like mad people calling you all the time. I'm like, what are you doing Tuesday? Can I get in the studio Tuesday? Cool. And you lock that in. And then someone else is like, hey, yo, I'm gonna come by Tuesday and do this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so it's really about structuring your time in a way that's not going to overwhelm yourself and a way that you can get everything done because I was even telling my lady today, I was like, yo, I got to make sure I get on this call. Kato, I'm not about to let this fool down because he's coming, he's come through in the clutch for me, you know what I mean? Like, on shit like that. And it's just responsibilities and you just got to hold true to, like, your commitments. So just make sure whatever you commit to that you can do it. And that's, that's just life shit, you know what I mean? Like, deadlines are a part of life and everything, you know what I mean? Be like, I wasn't about to, I followed all the rules that they wanted me to follow. Like, I, I changed all my meta tagging. I changed all my descriptions. I changed my end screens. I changed my header, my banner, and my shit jumped from 9,000 to we just hit 35,000 subscribers this year. So in you know six months, we got 25,000 subscribers, and I'm super fucking amped on that because it's like, you know, it's just seeing seeing the results by it's low key playing their game. They want you to do that shit, and when you do that shit, they reward you for it. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's a lot of like social media things you can take advantage of that will help you and grow your grow your brand for sure yeah just by doing it like the right by taking that extra time you know and back in the day when i was uploading videos they're like give me keywords you know you like type in four keywords and you're done you know you're like all right cool upload done send it off and it's like now i'm sitting there meticulously filling every single fucking keyword till that shit will not let me put one more in you know what i mean because you really have to play that that game because you're in a world of like a million motherfuckers trying to do the same thing and trying to get noticed the same way. And I kind of made sure, you know, you got to fight for like that flyer love. You got to fight for that. Like make sure, make sure I'm, you put the parentheses produced by DJ Hoppa in the YouTube shit, because man, yeah. your name has, as a producer, you got to get your name placed everywhere, bro, because nobody gives a fuck about you. Nobody wants to see your face. You know, they just care about the rapper. They just care about the front man. So it's like, you have to fight to get, as much uh to be noticed as much as possible you know what i mean because the more people see your name the more of a brand you are and the more of a brand you are the more records you're going to sell and the more you're going to get for your beats and everything you know so another thing i learned was was catering to the fans man and really knowing what the source is of everything and that's the fans and when people fuck with your music you better respect the shit out of those motherfuckers because without them you ain't shit because there's yeah. a million people trying to make music. So it's like, you know, if you're just starting out and you're like, man, I got a couple fans, like whatever, like you better show those couple fans the most love forever. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're riding with you from the jump and they, they get permanent guest lists and shit because 
you know, it's all about them at the end of the day. Those are the motherfuckers that are going to buy your shit, buy your shirt, you know, put food on your fucking table, go to your shows, tell your, tell their friends to listen to your shit. So, so, how, it's, so all, how, it's tough. Um, cause I know a lot of DJs and producers are usually like me and they're antisocial. Um, yeah. that's why we're producers and DJs and not rappers and fucking front men. Like, right. but, uh, you got to go to shows. You got to go, find the events that you want to be performing at and kick it there and be seen and get known because it's so easy to just like, as long as you're cool and you're not coming off thirsty, man, motherfuckers will notice you and they'll show you love. You know, if you go to an event, you're just like, yo man, I appreciate that you're putting on this event. Like my name is this, this is what I do, you know, and, and you just show up and you support, you will naturally, I guarantee be playing that event shortly. It's just like not being thirsty is the number one fucking thing. It's just be supportive. If you support that scene, that scene will support you. So it's right. like, you know, if you want to, if you want to perform at a certain, if you got like the one promoter or the one club in your city that's popping, just go there and pay the dues. You know, like fucking pay the cover charge and and just try to hang out and meet the dude, whatever. You know, like fucking and get that opening slot, get that spot. It's easy. You know, right. you could just be the the dopest dude out of fucking I'm trying to think of a really tiny city. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you could be the dopest dude out of Idaho Falls. You know what I mean? Or you could be the dopest dude out of fucking whatever random little city anywhere you're from, you know? And and that's almost a better look. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's a better look as an indie musician to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond than yeah. to be a little fish in a big pond. That's true. I was just on a Kid Ink tour multiple buses fucking 30 people catering sound man all kinds of fucking backstage passes you had to walk five minutes to get from the front door to the side door and then another 10 minutes to get to the back door and it was a huge fucking production right and then it's like that's cool great we plan for 2500 people a night great then i rock a rock a tour with my homegirl gavelin play for 150 people a night and make seven times as much fucking money you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying because of the game, bro. It's always light at the end of the tunnel, man. And and everybody's path takes a different amount of time. And I've seen it happen. You know, the older you get, you see people, you see people attempt it. You see people quit. You see people make it. And you just got to determine what kind of person you want to be and, and what kind of path you want to take to achieve your dreams, man. Like on some, it, you know, it sounds like corny when you say achieve your dreams, but it's the realest shit ever. You know what I mean? Like it's, you got to either throw it in there and do it or, or just do whatever fucking you got to do. But my story, luckily, like, fucking persistence, you know, helped out. And I got to a point where now I can pretty much do whatever the fuck I want to do and make the music I want to make without having to please anybody or, you know what I mean, succumb to any fucking corporate shit. 